So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. First of all, happy 1st of October. It is officially Halloween month, which in my opinion is the best month of the whole year. Alright, so look, there's a whole lot to talk about regarding this week's episode because holy shit, I stand by what I said. I've rewatched the episode twice since the reaction. I have to say, I stand by what I said. I think it's the best episode that we've seen so far from the season. It's probably one of my favourite episodes I've seen in seasons. So... There's a lot to talk about. Oh man, I thought I forgot to click record there for a minute. I was going to be like, scream. I'm going to scream. Okay, so as usual, I'm getting up my own video to go to the comments and um, respond to some things that you guys might have said. Because, whoa, there was thoughts on this this episode. Alright, so first of all, yeah, a lot of people talk about Greg and how Greg, Greg did with this episode. Anytime I see Greg's name on like the direction, the direction, the director's... What are words? Anytime I see Greg's name um, listed as director, I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. I don't know. I don't know is it like a mixture of because he's been with the show for so long that he knows it in a way that maybe some other directors don't. Is it the fact that he... Like, the dude's a genius when it comes to horror and all things spooky and creepy. And I don't know, he just brings, he just brings something different when he directs. So... Yeah, he lived up to it. He lived up to it for sure with this one. I feel like the editing of this as well worked really well for the episode. Like when you had, any time it cut to Connie, you had the complete silence to kind of put you in her shoes and put you with her. But with that, then you had the really weird like string music that was so old horror classics. You know, again, that's probably something that I would, I would say Greg brought that, but um, that could be, you know, another influence or whatever but I would say that was Greg like when you're following Connie around the house if you just keep her right there with her and being in her shoes not being able to hear what's going on you're scared you're confused you're you're with her every step of the way so I think that that just worked absolutely flawlessly uh her in the wall with the knife coming through was so like here's Johnny but here's Virgil it was just maybe I missed it but I don't know how long she was actually with Virgil for so I I'm gonna let it slide that he hadn't learned any sign yet um, because maybe they were still quite new on their journey together but I did find it a bit weird that he was still just talking away to himself while she was sitting beside him and it's like dude you got a sign it was a missed opportunity in a way though because th it could have been a Halloween episode they could have somehow kept well maybe to bring Connie back into the storyline it mightn't have worked timeline wise but they could have kept this and aired it Halloween day because I'm pretty sure Halloween this year is on a f Sunday so it would have worked out well for like scheduling but maybe they're bringing her back into the main storyline I don't know but I feel like this would have been perfect air on Halloween because honestly it's one of the creepiest and unsettling episodes that we've gotten in a real long time you know like it did have that ha haunted house vibe out in the middle of nowhere you don't know what's going on and then you have the creepy Tarzan cannibal freaks and it's like well there's something that was not on my bingo card for The Walking Dead 2021 but here we go and like I guess it works because like you would have some people there's always there's always a few that just go balls to the wall berserk crazy and I'm guessing that's what happened in the situation that the outbreak happened and these freaks were like right it's my time to shine they built their little shop of horrors they stripped off all their clothes and decided to just crawl around and wait for some poor motherfucker to stumble upon their house didn't work out very well in the end for them given the fact they ended up dead but that's what you get someone have to come and say you don't think anything's gonna beat this laughing my ass off well yeah because I think this was a solid episode I thought it was absolutely everything about it from the editing to the filming to the lighting to the angles outside of like the storyline and the creepiness yeah I feel like it was the best structured episode um, and it was paced really well and yeah it's going to take something seriously seriously big to top this one for me someone said why did you fancy Daryl so much because I've gone into this like a bazillion times you must be new here um I just think he's a really well written character and I don't know he's just da he's like he's everyone's ride or die you know he's in your corner no matter what and he's been my favourite character since I began the show speaking of Daryl actually the whole Daryl and Lydia thing has me like Lydia was that her name? Lillian Lilith uh the new missus whatever her name is yeah I'm not really warming up to that any more than I was I mean people are starting to kind of slowly warm up to it and I'm like I'm still not convinced I know that we've seen I don't know we've seen glimpses of her now and you have the Bellamy from the 100 lookalike uh, there were some people asking like what his relevancy was I'm guessing it's just that 
he has a thing for her and he's like I'm your ride or die don't you forget that I'll die for you and then she was like yeah but what about when I had to go through the fire and he was like I'd rather not talk about that let's just move on so like he loves her and he's loyal but not that loyal just saying Daryl pushed her head first out the window before him just saying so Bellamy 2.0 is probably going to be an issue moving forward I just I get that like she needs to play her cards close to her chest and she needs to stay safe or whatever but I, she's more on their side than Daryl's. That's pretty fucking clear. Even if she is having her doubts, even if she is leaning more towards trying to open up to Daryl or trying to trust Daryl, whatever, she, her loyalties still aren't with him just yet. And even if she does decide to change and be like, oh my God, Daryl, like, you know, I'll go with you, whatever. She's been with them for too long, you know? I just, nah, I don't know. As I've said before, maybe we just need to get to see her more. Maybe we need to get to know her more and get used to her being around. But I don't particularly feel anything for her character. So the whole hiding our group in the house while their group searches was so intense. Daryl again showing his true colours, standing on top of the, the, the rug thing when he thought his people were under there. He was like, right. And then when Bellamy twigged what was going on, Daryl just pulled out that knife and he was like, I'll stab you in the head if I have to. Okay, I'd rather not because I'm deep undercover here, but if you find my people, I will stab you in the back of the head. Again, that just shows the loyalty and the determination, and I love that in the character. I love seeing glimpses that I, of that in the character, even when it's not explicitly shoved in your face. It's little things like that, it's just like, yes, I picked right when I picked him. I said it on Twitter, I said it in the video, and I'll say it again. I think Lauren absolutely killed this episode. We had a lot going on. Um... There's a lot of like tense moments and whatnot, yeah, but she just stole this episode for me. Honestly, I can't remember much else about this, or I can't remember many scenes in this episode without thinking of her. The facial expressions, the body language, the fear that she just absolutely like emanated in this episode was something else. Virgil was really good too, but she stole it for me. Especially the whole end scene where she just like smeared walker guts all over herself and then... <laughs> plastered herself to the wall in front of Virgil and had the walkers come in and just finish it off that was genius a bit confusing at first I was like well are they walkers what's the deal how is this gonna work does she think they're that dumb but then it all clicked into place the final scene where we get to see them reunited and we get to see them we get to see uh, Kelly come along and reunite with Connie just I know she had to skip to do Eternals and like that is such a huge opportunity and she deserves it because she's a fantastic actress but like I have missed her on the show and like you know it did create a little bit of drama because you have the whole she went missing and then it was like will they find her won't they is she going to come back or isn't she so that reunition scene reunition that's not a word is it fuck it it is now seeing them get to reunite again and, and the, the emotions and shit and it's going to be even more intense when they bring her back and you know she gets to see everyone I'm excited to see well if she better she better if she reunites with Daryl what the reaction is going to be there because I know a lot of people ship them together and I have to say if I'm shipping Daryl with anyone it's got to be Connie my opinion don't come for me so yeah I really did like this one I thought that it was it was it was unexpected but at the same time like it's a horror show so is it that unexpected not really but for The Walking Dead yeah and someone made a good point where they said that it's a horror series and it's on the last season so they can really do whatever the fuck they want now anything that they wanted to put in or include or try all along it's like it's the last season this is your last chance just fucking go for it do it if it falls flat whatever and if it works you get a great episode like this so i wonder are they gonna do more of that shit are they gonna shock us with more craziness yeah there's probably more that i'm missing that i haven't included in this but that's just some of my thoughts for now as always thank you guys so much for support and for leaving comments and stuff i love even now i'm just kind of scrolling through going through some of the comments i love reading what you guys have to say and the love and support that you guys give me is absolutely everything and it makes my day i'm not gonna i'm not gonna even try and play cool it really does make my day and i love talking to you guys and hearing your guys opinions because a lot of the time you point out things that i either didn't notice or just didn't touch on um now sometimes to be fair like i've said before uh, I put the more extended cut of each reaction up over on Patreon so sometimes I might cut my response to things or cut out parts of the video obviously just due to copyright reasons and due to runtime for the video so yeah the link to my Patreon is down below if you guys want to support I would really appreciate it if not that's totally fine 
you, you know just showing your love and support here means the absolute world so that's grand but yeah if you are interested the link is down below the link to my twitter my instagram and all of those other social medias is also down below too um on to episode seven i think thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you all soon